self this is the chuck of the oh, day cool. you know? yeah wow. these are dope yeah do you have what it takes to grab the 300 dollars bag let's take a peek at some of our past contestants my name is tiffany greer i am a singer slash voiceover artist and i'm also now the voice of Ambi. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And laugh. The skies above, they are blue. My heart was wrapped up in clover. The night I looked at you. Do you have what it takes to grab the $300 bag? Yeah. Tonight it's your girl Miss Leah Marie. We in the house. Um, 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the outlet. It has been a hectic, crazy new year. I am so excited for everything that's going on in all of our lives. I hope you are living a productive life as we speak. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Miss Hazel Eyes. Hello, Real. Hello, Katrina. Welcome, you guys. The show is about to get started. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been supporting. Um, the project is going well. We finally have the footage from the live recording. Um, the album is almost done. Christ the King is out. It's lit right now. Um, my co-host, I don't know where this guy is at. I'm actually a little bit busy. As you guys know, I've been booked and busy. I don't post everything all the time. But if you follow me, you know, on my website, you can follow my dates if you want to show up and have a good time and celebrate, party, whatever, dance with me. You already know what to do. Follow the website, leahmariemusic.org. But I am not supposed to be live tonight. I'm getting ready to be in Minnesota. So if you're in the area, if you're in Minnesota, please DM me so I can get you some tickets to the event. I will be performing my song. I'm also going to be touring with a traveling choir, FM2 and Intentional. We about to have a lit season. It's dope. Um, just found out that we're opening for um, the the uh, Spring Festival featuring Kiara Sheard and um, Vanessa Bell Armstrong and Charles Jenkins. That's about to be so lit. I'm so excited for that. And then, of course, Dante Roberson has his drum clinic coming up. Uh, you guys, make sure you're supporting the drum clinic. He is uh, probably going to be touring again. So, you know, that's what we do around here. What's up, Rail? Rail, you guys, make sure you are you guys are tuning in to Business to Business. She has really turned that thing around. It's about to be something amazing. Um, I'm excited for the next show. I can't wait till Wednesday. I'm going to be sitting in the audience with y'all, getting that good, good nourishment for my business practices. Um, but yeah, with that being said, we about to get in the show. If my co-host ain't here, y'all already know we about to get it lit. We about to have the conversation. We are going to start the conversation off tonight talking about musicians, the Levites being paid in the church. Now, there has been several posts that have, has been posted. There's a video that has surfaced. We're not going to play it tonight because of copyright issues. But we're going to have a small conversation because I saw a lot of prominent pastors speaking against paying the Levites. Can y'all believe this? They're speaking against paying the Levites. <sighs> y'all, I thought we made it past this. I thought we was in 2024 and we are moving forward. Oh my goodness, you guys. So get your people in here. Let them know that the conversation is going to be had. I'm going to allow people to come up if you feel like you want to say something. Um, to voice your opinion if you like. But until then, let me run this commercial and we will be right back. Hello, good people. This is TBM Tiffany Binion, Mangum Gospel Recording Artist, Media Personality, and your host for the Best Days Morning Show on Believe Radio. Folks, join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Believe Radio Fresno. Dot com, where we're bringing you the most amazing gospel music. At Believe Radio, we are committed to bringing you music that encourages, inspires, and blesses you. So become a believer today by joining me, Tiffany Binion Mangum, on BelieveRadioFresno.com every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for the Best Days Morning Show. These are your best days. Okay, y'all. So you know that Leah Marie is a hot mess. I'm really trying to wait for my co-host because I want to play around. You know, I want to play around. You know what? I'm about to call him on. I'm about to call him live because you know what? That's what we do. Watch this. He probably going to be cussing. Man of God. Yes. I'm live on the air right now and your people is looking for you in the comments and they're asking where the heck you at and you're on my phone, but you're not on the screen. So can we find out what's going on? Can you talk to the people? I'm coming on the screen. Anyway. And my, my stupid thing, which one am I going on? We're back with Hot Topic. Okay, here it is. 
Y'all hear that, right? Y'all hear that? See, 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 he about to, I told you I was gonna start cussing. I told you. Bye. Hurry up. I'm coming. <laughs> I'll try to wait. I have a, a really crazy video. So, how do you guys feel about Levites being paid? Totally fired. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, how do you guys feel about that? I need to see you guys in the chat. How do you feel about hey Bobby? How you doing, brother? Welcome to the outlet. Um, you guys, he has an amazing project out right now. He's a guitarist um, and he's an amazing musician. Go support that um, man and his music. I actually really like listening to him. Nice and easy grooving. Um, and he supports the show and our music too. Shout out to Bobby Griffin. Who? Who does? Bobby Griffin. Oh, yeah. What's up, Taz? What's up, girl? Tardy boots, tardy to the party. I, I don't see the thing to do the live, to, to, to share the live. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's so late. Okay, so let's get this show going. So we're talking about the Levites. So you know the first thing that I thought about when we when we talk about the Levites being paid is the, the weed smoking Levites. <laughs> ah, ah, so here, this is this is to pay homage to all of you Levites out here who want to increase your wealth and you want to um, increase your resume pay, this is a service that is for you. Here we go. Julia, only white and Nika on his alive pipare, two up hard work on a lace way. Nakana Yamuniji, a drina ne, bebone, Yamuniji no dry yanti dazi, train my live pipare. Jane Yogaro, Queen Nakan, you made up on Mamuji, or Pachata pipare, live quite and Nika. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you are a weed smoking Levite who happens to have the black lips, you don't have to do that no more. You can't get rid of the black lips. Did y'all know that it was a surgery to get rid of black lips? Did you know that they had this? Look at them. Look at them lips. <laughs> Before and after. That's crazy. Look at that. That is a now you might be unable to eat and talk for a little bit. That looks like it's gonna hurt really bad. But that is amazing. You could go over to um one of our, you know, brothers and sisters from I don't know, she sounds like maybe she might be Armenian or Punjabi or something. You could go over there and get your lips done and come back. And that you can add ten thousand a year to that. <laughs> You can say, listen, look at my lips. I'm pink. I have been washed clean. <laughs> I don't look like I smoke no more. <laughs> Get your teeth whitened and you good to go. But anyway, so have you seen the video about uh, people not wanting to pay the Levites? That was a real controversial conversation in that video. I think we posted it in our group uh, where the man, the musician said that um, the Levi should be paid, and you heard a lot of pastors coming in there saying that they shouldn't. How do you feel about that? The devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. Because if you can get your um, love token, then I should be getting my love token as well. But they would say that you're not the pastor. So then, what would you say? Then I would say, okay, pastor, I hope you got some drumsticks or, or and got another arm to play organ and another hand to play guitar and bass while you at it. Because just like you bring something to the ministry, so do I. Do you believe that? Um, <laughs> do you believe? I know that video is hilarious, right? <laughs> do you believe that um, the Levite should give of their service freely? No. You know what I mean? If they join the church and they should serve without asking for any any coinage. The pastor is the shepherd of the church. So again, if he's the shepherd of the church, why? And he's getting something. Why can't I? I'm just saying. But what like about those pastors that work? What about those pastors that have jobs and they pastor? They still getting something. They're still getting something. Even the dude that talks like this and me talking about everybody and their mama, he mm -hmm. goes, he still gets a, a, an offering. 
he still gets something. Even though he say he I work, I work a regular job. I don't need the church's money. You still get something from your church, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's neither here nor there. What what is what is the problem is what people are not understanding is that there are musicians and singers that abuse the situation. I agree. But you need to vet your people better. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Because I play at a spot where the four of us are lock and key. And the two ministers of music, we like this. So, you know, if your folks are coming late and your folks are not doing what they're supposed to do and y'all still singing, um, I never shall forget every Sunday, that's your fault. Pastor, that's your fault. I wouldn't pay for that either. But with that being said, you know, if you don't want to pay your musicians, just get ready to play a lot for yourself. You better be a musician yourself, Pastor. That's all I'm saying. Your wife better be the dopest drummer in the world. Because okay. you're, you're going viral. So when it comes to the Levite, the Levites, let's just kind of let's put it into perspective. The Levite is the musician, it's the gatekeepers, it's the guardian. So in our day, in our modern day, that would be the deacons. That would be your uh, people who service the parking lot. The hospitality. The hospitality. The you the got readers, the temple the officials. Yeah, you got the officials. So you have all of your officials in the temple, which includes your singers, musicians, um, all of those people. Then you have your judge, judges and your craftsmen. Now, what I don't understand is why churches go get all of this funding from the government and they get all of these loans and these things to build these mega ministries only to jip the people who actually serve and keep the ministry running. Because the pastor does not keep the ministry running. You feed the people. You feed the people. If you love me, feed my sheep. Yeah. If you love me, feed my sheep. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Gillier, he said that. But, but the reality of it is, is that all of these people make up the ministry. So when you have the best ones that I've seen to keep this in the Black community, is like the Baptists. Seven Day Adventists, they really take, well, the ones that I know, they take care of their staff. They make sure that whatever funding that they receive, the staff, all of the staff, from the media crew to your engineers, to your musicians, to your ushers, everybody gets a little bit of something to make them, keep them afloat. Now, should you only solely depend on the church? That depends. Well, that depends. If they have you um, working in a capacity where you have no time to do nothing else, you only serve in the pastor and you only teach music to the choir, and they then yeah, you should pay them a comparable wage. Yeah, then you sh then you should be on salary. Yes, and get their wages. Yes, I agree. But at the same time, my whole thing is this: when that church asks me to come through the doors, they better be giving me my check. That's, that's all you know. That's, that's all, all you know. know. Because and, but they, see now, because if, if they ever came to me and said, "Oh, we just want to thank you for blessing us with your time," I didn't bless you with nothing. <laughs> you better say, "Pay to the order of Dante." Tez well, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. See, this is the thing about our community. They want you to go out of your way, sweat out your good suit, sweat out your good wig, and your good press and curl. <laughs> That's why we're T-shirts to church every Sunday. They want you to completely go out of your way to do things, and they don't even want to give you a ham sandwich. It used to be back in the day, at least you would get a, a grape soda, you okay. know, a nice little meal. You get a little envelope with a bunch of quarters and some rolled up ones. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, they actually took pride in taking care of you. Okay, so watch this. <laughs> The church in Seaside, where I used to play, Jason Barry knows what I'm talking about. They used to give Ken and I the first dinners. And our dinners would be on the table, fresh, I mean, fresh out the, the chicken, fresh out the grease. You could see 
through the aluminum foil that is just steaming. And My instead goodness. of two pe instead of two pieces, we had about three pieces. We had two good scoops of spaghetti, four scoops of green beans, and two pieces of thinly sliced cake, and a and two pieces of bread. <laughs> That's that was part of our cake. <laughs> Listen, we didn't get nothing. And as a singer, we have been disrespected down through the years so much that it <laughs> it's really unfortunate mm -hmm. that. Um, I'm not even asking you to cover my entire trip. I'm just asking you to give me something, maybe pay for my room and board. How about you do that? Or give me a stipend for a little meal, you know. Okay. Or so, you want me to buy new clothes. You want me to look my best. You want me to put on my Fenty and my Il Maquet, Maquille uh, makeup. You want me to have on my best of wigs. You want me to, you want me to come in there and be well read, well learned. Um, I could do that at my local church. I don't have to come to your service to do that. Just like you don't have to come to mine. But so, we find these budgets that are huge and outrageous for people to hmm. give you the same word over and over and over again. But the singers and the musicians, we have to slave for y'all. And you do not <laughs> move. It's you like don't want to cover us. Now let's let's look at this dynamic of a two and a half hour service. Let's pay attention. Let's break this down because I really want to get into this, right? Two and a half service, two and a half hour service. Musicians and singers is working at least one and a half of those hours. Period. There's no exception. We're singing the open the service. We're but singing praise and worship. Thing. We're there, we're there almost an hour or oh, 30, 30, 30 minutes yes. to an hour before the yes. <laughs> Yeah, so. yeah. So we got a three hour set. Yeah. So sound check, open the service, praise and worship, sing in between and give you all this, what they like to call passing music. We got to give you the passing music because you got to have something while you giving your speech, getting the people ready to give them coins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you got people sitting on wood benches. It's not even cushioned and comfortable so they don't have back problems. You got your, your drummer sitting over there on this little bitty stool. You got no, your, <laughs> no, it depends on the church. Some churches have the drummer sitting on a folding chair. Which I'm just prayer, saying. With them, I'm prayer, just with saying. them prayer pillows. <laughs> and you, the drums up here and you like this, you lean back like, oh. I'm just saying. And they don't want you. Now, if you get up off of the musician's instrument or you get that mic and you put it down and you go on the back just to get some water, some substance. So your lips ain't dry and your cheek, the insides of the corner of your mouth ain't white. They blasting you on the microphone. Why are you getting up? Why are you getting up, brother drummer? Uh, I played for an hour and a half and my pants are wet from sweat. Can I dry right. off? Can Don't I dry even off? include. We're not even including the praise break. So okay, so we get there. Then during offering time, you want a, a offering song. And depending on how much money you tried to raise, we might have to drag that one song for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Let so me hear you say, blast, blast, <laughs> blast. Why they over there like this? Blast, bless them with blast. From a punk, bless them with from a punk groove to an African groove to a Cuban <laughs> groove. Let me hear you say, blast, blast, blast. We done took bless and revamped that thing 15 times so y'all could get y'all money up, right? Then, right. after we get through with all of that, now that's about an hour and a half service, clearly, Mr. James, clearly. <laughs> but that's an hour and a half service, right? So now you finally get to your preacher and we about to finally get at least an hour break, hopefully, right? Oh, no, no, no. The choir got to come back or the praise team got to come back. Or we got to back up your sermonic soloist who didn't want to send the music up front. <laughs> and then the whole band is sitting there like this. What you singing? <laughs> well, I I just heard this song by Yolanda Adams. Uh, I was at a recording last night and I remember it. I, you know, I <laughs> memorized it and I want to do it tonight. I wasn't there. <laughs> What are you we got even hold on, Katrina. Don't don't jump. Don't move us too fast, baby. Keep us in. The, we still in the hostel, okay? Hold on. Yeah, we, yeah. We're not even there yet. <laughs> <laughs> we before the preacher get up. So finally, oh my God! Don't even get to that because the organist has to work triple time. Okay. 
<laughs> and don't let your organist not know how to play in all his keys. Because oh, she, goes, she goes like this, uh, I want to do this song in G. He go like this. That's a white key. Mm -hmm. You can't go to C sharp or E flat? He going to go to the key that he feel comfortable. He going to put her in E flat and she just going to sing because she don't have perfect pitch. She going to be She going to be in the good. She going to be like, I have some good days. I have some heat. Yeah, you know, like, is that really? But no, then the choir got to come back and sing. So, okay, now you got all this musical presentation to soften the people's heart, to change the mood, to change the atmosphere, whatever you want to call it. So then, and we're not even going to include a praise break, okay? We're not even going to put that in there. Leave the praise break out. Now your preacher get up and your preacher is going to do one of two things. They're either going to rile the people up and get them ready to shout or sing another song. <laughs> Straight. You hear me? Straight to C-sharp. Don't, don't take, don't stop to pass. Go. Don't We're doing this. In, I'm going to sing this in D. Yeah, right. That's not D. It is today. <laughs> so, yeah. So you got all of that going on, right? So then the preacher come up. Now the organist still can't leave and get no water. Can't do nothing because can't go to the restroom because you got to play until the preacher finally get into his message, which could be 20 minutes. Preachers preach typically on average. Now, let's keep it a buck. OK, we're going to keep it a buck unless it's a Jake's or a Noel Jones or something like that. You're going to get a solid 30 to 45 minutes. I, I, I got a preacher that preaches a little bit longer than that. No, we're not talking about your pastor. He's different. That's not my pastor. I'm, not my well, pastor. you know the church he play at, but I'm yeah. saying. My pastor got a is 22 minutes. Third. We're not talking about him. He's the exception to the rule. <laughs> my pastor is 22 minutes. <laughs> we are talking about average preachers are only going to actually preach for 45 minutes, and that's in total. That's subject matter, body, text. Closing <laughs> and the who and, and the and the and the, the, the SARS that they use for all the new words they just looked up to go with everything they want to talk about. I'm just saying, that. and then they're gonna spend the last portion of what they call an hour and a half working us. We gonna have to sing while he out there laying hands and pumping the people up to get them to sow seed in the word that he just gave. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, I'm ready. And they're gonna say, all right now, everybody, well, all right, I understand. All right, you up, uh, you high in the spirit. Go go to your pocketbook and sow into this word. No, yeah, and and <laughs> God forbid, God forbid if your pastor calls up a visiting pastor. Mm -hmm. That offering is so long for him that laid hands on folks and prophet lied and everything. He go to he go to the big woman, and go, God's telling me that you want to lose weight. Stop it. He's telling me now that you <laughs> want to lose be weight. Serious. So you, want, you want to be eight pounds lighter, don't you? So with all of that being said, right, y'all? <laughs> Lord Jesus. So <laughs> you, the pastor that preach is going to charge, you know, 2500 on up to 20 30 grand, and you fussing about giving me my little 150 to $200. It ain't, it ain't making sense. It's not making no sense because... Like there's there's a church. I'm not gonna say no names. I do not play at this church, but this is what they do. They do a pre-count song. So five minutes before the service starts, there's a song that the band plays instrumentally. I will bless the Lord, whatever the case you may be. Then out of that, they got the opening song. After the opening song, they do prayer, then they do scripture reading, then Praise and Worship sings three more songs, three more songs. And that last song leads into them getting ready for an accessory prayer, which is another song. Then at an intercessory prayer, you got the choir that come up and sing. So that's another song. Then my favorite song that they have, they have a welcome song for the visitors when they go greet the visitors. So you got that song. Then the choir sings two more songs. Then the offering song. Then after the offering song, praise God, the choir comes up with one more song. And then the pastor. And then after the pastor, they do 
you know, the hoop holler and all that stuff, the bump, and then the laying of the hand song, and then they do the outro song. If you don't write my check, we're going to have problems. We're going to have some we gonna have problems. problems. <laughs> There's going to be some smoke because in this city. What? This is crazy. And to say, it's so Look. insulting to say to the Levites of your community, go get a job. If I had to get a job, you go get a job. As a pastor, you should not be um, working. You should have cultivated your ministry. Maybe for a season, you should be working. But you should have cultivated your ministry and grown it enough to where you can come off of that job and be full time for your people, for your ministry, for your community. That's the purpose. That's the goal so that you can have worship pastors, worship leaders. You can have musicians that are paid that can come off of their job and serve. When, or if they don't want to, they can still work, but they have the option to do so. I don't understand what is so difficult for you guys to grasp that concept. Like, why is it that you guys choose to be ignorant on purpose? Musicians, buy you one of these. Buy you a $20 screwdriver ratchet set right here, drill. That pastor don't want to pay you, start taking some of that stuff down in that church. <laughs> and pull it down. I, oh, I'll, I'll pawn this. This is my pay. Thank you. Well, but here's the deal, though. <laughs> I know somebody that did that. That's... <laughs> That'd be I know call, somebody right? that really did that. <laughs> that brother took his drums and he took his board and they came back in <laughs> next Sunday and all they had was a grand piano and <laughs> it was empty. <laughs> and they haven't opened this since they first started the church. They were like... <laughs> yeah, they worked that out quick. That, that contract was worked out. You hear me? <laughs> they were like... Oh my God. Hey, I know one church. Yeah, I know one church. This dude, this church was using this dude's drums, and he was an older guy. He stopped playing drums, and um, you know, he was playing for the church and everything. He stopped playing drums, and then the church said they were gonna buy the drums. The church didn't, they said they were gonna give him this check that Sunday before you know that week before Sunday. When they came in that Sunday, the drummer came in like this. <laughs> Not bringing your sticks with no drums. <laughs> no, the drummer came in because the, the church had drums. The drummer came in like, uh, did y'all move the drums because y'all cleaned this area or something? They go, right. what do you mean move the drums? It's like, ain't no drums in here. He was like, no, the question is, did y'all vacuum? Because you know they always move the drums to vacuum. <laughs> He had no drums. That I went in there and I was in tears because that dude was like, they didn't give me my money. I took my drums. That drummer is over there in the corner by the organ, air drumming to the choir. Yeah. Well, but but here's the deal, guys. Seriously, in all fairness, and I do understand that there are um, there are policies and procedures that should be in place for your Levites. Absolutely. They should be held to a certain standard. We don't, we're not, we're not sitting here talking about that. But the reality of it is, is that if you are not paying your Levites, shame on you. Get out there of is. your, get out of your comfort zone and go um, evangelize. Go, go do what the Bible say and find disciples. Get people in your church. If you grow your church, if you um, teach people how to evangelize and how to how to begat one another, then you won't have an issue about paying your musicians. Okay? You won't have an issue about covering the lights in the church and deciding and if you're going to pay this person or pay that person. A Come work on, of any okay, kind. Well, preach. A work of any kind. It doesn't matter if it's a church or any kind. You've got to put the footwork in. It's not just about the prayer and about the um, the relationship that you have inside the four walls. You have to create relationship outside the four walls. I'm not saying your church has to be a 500 seater, but you can have people that will give to your ministry. There are companies out there that will give to your ministry and never set one foot in the church. Not one. 
You can get the bills paid. You don't want to pay your musicians. You want to use the Bible as a weapon and, and guilt trip them into giving their gifts to you and calling it, giving it to God. I can give my gift to God without being in your four walls. That's one. I can give my gift to God while being in your four walls. That's two. But when you ask me to go outside of that gifting and now you're taking away from my family, you're taking away from my livelihood, you're taking away from me being able to actually be productive in society, then you're going to have to compensate me for that. You don't get to take that part of my time and yeah. then tell me that I'm wrong and I should be giving it to God. Excuse me? Well, I, I will say this. I will say this. And I need y'all church folks to understand this and tell y'all church and tell y'all pastors this too. You wonder why you go through so many people and so many musicians because the business is not handled. Because the pastors want the business for themselves, want it for themselves. And I'm tired of seeing that thermo, you know, that thermometer in your church and it's still stuck at ten thousand dollars. And you talk about you need you need a hundred and twenty thousand, but it's still stuck at ten thousand. That showed me that no one gives in your church. If that thing haven't moved in two years from ten thousand dollars, that shows me people don't give. And that showed me that you don't respect your musicians, you don't respect your singers. Because me personally, me personally, I feel anybody in the praise and worship team, musicians, need to be paid. Period. Period. Let's go ahead and um, get to this next. Uh, okay, y'all, we about to transition. So I'm not even going to give you a segue. We're just going to run it because all I'm going to say is Grandpa was fed up. That's all I'm going to say. Here we go. Good evening, cowards. Nice to see a, a bunch of fat, ugly women. Oh, and we'll see that. oh what? excuse you. What? No, 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 no. They're fat, ugly women is what they are. Let's talk about it. You don't have to buy. It's called free speech. Buy. That's not free speech. That's insulting. <laughs> okay, everybody. And we wonder why children are retarded, stupid today. We wonder why. We wonder why when we have these these pathetic people here called teachers rape the children's mind. And if you people are too stupid to know what rape is, good evening, cowards. <laughs> now this. Is how you handle the boardroom. <laughs> My he man started. said, "He said good evening, good evening, cowards." <laughs> Ooh, it's men up there on the board, but he was like, "You all are a bunch of fat, angry women." <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Why are you talking about me like that? He said. He said, this isn't, it's, he says free speech. He said, this isn't free speech. This is insults. He said, yeah, leave. <laughs> Yo, Yo was... this took me out. Let me tell you something. Parents are fed up. When the grandfather who is retired, he don't work no more. And he didn't win in there to have something to say. You know, the schools is going up. This is crazy. We have got to do something about our educational system because what? Hey, remember that, remember, 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 that, remember that Instagram video that went famous when they said um, the parent, the lady was helping her kids. She was like, three plus two is what? Five. He, she goes, okay, good. So Sally has two apples. Johnny gives, Johnny has three apples. Johnny gives Sally his three apples. How many apples does Sally have? He goes, 50. The mama goes, what? What? No, you don't have 50. <laughs> yeah, no, this is we the school system is crazy. And unfortunately, while his language is not all together, you know, it, it, it's not, but you know what? Sometimes you got to go Cow in and you just got to choose violence. Good evening, cowards. Nice to see a, a bunch of fat, ugly women. Oh, no. No, 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 no,
They're yeah. fat, yeah. ugly yeah. women is what they are. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about yeah. it. Uh, yeah. You don't yeah. have to. Bye. That ain't free speech. It's called well, free speech. Either. Bye. Hey, that's not free speech. That's insulting. But you know what's so cold about it is the one lady that got up and walked out was a plus size lady. <laughs> that was so perfect. It was it was like the perfect storm. And she, <laughs> and she walked out with that good switch. <laughs> you, you, you know she mad because she walked out with that good switch. Right. <laughs> she thought it was so just doing this. But I, you know, oh my gosh. Hey, her shoulders were so big, look like she had on linebacker pads. <laughs> and she had on the little sports t-shirt. It was just a mess. And he didn't curse. He didn't. He just felt, he expressed how he felt. But I agree. I felt like they should have let that video play. I'm still trying to find out what city he in. I want to see the footage because I what he actually him. I had to meet say. Him. You I want to meet him. I want to meet him. Trick what he video. had to say was right, though. What he had to say was right. The children's minds are being flooded with things that has nothing to do with education. We are teaching our kids about everything but how to survive in life. They have taken away all of the uh, programs that gives your children's trades out of school. They have taken away the, the uh, music and arts. They have taken away the home economics. What are we going, what are we doing? That's why our kids are going to school spending $60,000 on education and still broke. They don't even know how to do a trade, change a light bulb, change a tire. Um, young ladies don't know how to sew. They don't know how to get in the kitchen and make the basics. How about just boil some water to put a little rice in it, you know? <laughs> like, like, we were taught those things coming up. Because, uh, you know, I was born 80, but through the 90s, I had home economics. I made a whole hammock, like saw down the wood and put my little um, screws in there and net it. I made my net. Yo, I made yo. a real hammock. Wait, can y'all imagine seeing Leah in high school making a hammock? Yes, I did with my freeze. Straight okay? home and straight <laughs> tool time, home improvement. She and no, it was home economics. It was home economics. It wasn't tool time because of you know we had to learn how to sew and all that. But I made an actual. I had a choice to make a few items, and I made a hammock. I stained the wood. You know, you learn about stain real quick. That it get on your hands and don't come out. We <laughs> <Clean> in there. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know what kind of school you went to, but the school I went to had programs. We had Yo, no, we no, we had we had a uh, we had uh, uh, plumbing, electricity. We had auto mechanics. We had home economics at my high school. At my high mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. I already knew all. That. I knew how to sew before I went to school because my mom and my grandma showed me how to sew. But still, for those people who are not blessed, the schools was the way for them to turn their lives into something else. How many mechanics do you know that learned how to work on cars in high school? You know what I'm saying? And know they how to change the battery, do the little alternate, do the right. little thing next, change the oil, change some brakes, stuff like that. You know how to do that type of stuff. Exactly. And the alternator is one changing the yeah. tire, doing things like that. We have taken all of that from our from our kids. And now the programs are specialized and they're hidden in other things. Like if you want to become a contractor, you have to go to certain places to get the free, because it's free access, but you don't even know where to go to get where this. to go. Yeah. So yeah, I feel him. I'm with Papa on this one. Papa He's came good. in with all the fire. Yeah. You lazy, <laughs> you lazy bastards. <laughs> Papa came in with the smoke. You hear me? He was ready. So you guys know each week uh, we're narrowing down. We only got 15 minutes left. We have one more topic. But each week we have a kid who is exceptional. And this little baby, y'all, this little baby just took me smooth out. So we're going to show her that we're going to go to Chuck of the Day. We're going to do our last topic and we're going to be out of here. But this baby right here, oh, <sighs> Y'all just look, just look. Uh oh, wrong one.
Okay, I don't know why I want to just go fast today. All right, here we go. Get the big head or nothing, but this the second shot, and she ain't brought the suckers out. <laughs> hey, I swear to God, if I'm gonna tell every newborn out there, y'all false every time. Get the sucker. Go in the draw or something. And give me two stickers too. Mermaid stickers. <laughs> Try to tell my dad I'm a big dog. This stuff don't hurt me. Get the stick and then put the band-aid on. My dad told my something, it's gonna be all right, mama. He cried. <laughs> He the one crying like he got the shot. I'm good, my boy. <laughs> ah, I'm good, my boy. <laughs> she is so cute. I don't know no baby like that. Have you uh, seen? I have never seen a baby like that. Why? Never seen a baby like he that. That baby, that baby looked at the needle go in, watched the needle go in, and then looked at dad, looked at the doctor, and looked at dad like, "Is we done or is we finished?" <laughs> <laughs> like I think that commentary was really for real what that baby was thinking. So I saw suckers when the babies came out. So I get it now. I, I better get a. I better get two suckers and two unicorn stickers. Right. <laughs> because all the other babies was crying, but you see, Daddy, look at me. Look at me. Right. And he all hovered over, looking at her, hunched. She looking at him like boo. She like she like she doing this. She all what. <laughs> right, and it's the look at the needle though. She is so cute. She watched. The and needle. give me two stickers too, mermaid stickers. Try to tell my dad I'm a big dog. This stuff don't hurt me. Get the stick and then put the bandaid on. My dad told my son it's gonna be all right, mama. He cried. <laughs> he the one crying like he got the shot. I'm... She looking at him like, did you just poke me? <laughs> Why are you poking me? <laughs> Oh, but anyway, so cute. I love the babies, y'all. We're going to support the extraordinary babies. That is extraordinary because most children, I have three, and all three cried. Holla. Yeah. Like they was losing their complete and utter mind. I took Taylor <laughs> I took Taylor for her first shots. Boy, I never seen the bottom of a baby's throat till that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. I haven't seen a baby not cry yet. That's literally when they say your first time is today. My first time was today. I, that was my first time. And that baby was like. Yeah. And it was the attitude because I've seen babies like take it. They cry a little bit, but then they be, you know, they be over it real quick. But she didn't even flinch. She was just like, what is this? Like, why are you touching me? <laughs> Who is this guy, dad? <laughs> like, you gonna let this happen? You gonna right, you gonna let this guy do this? So this is what we do in this world. <laughs> Y'all shoot people with sticks and stuff. Okay, all right, cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll be right back. You guys, we're gonna take a commercial. We have one more. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I appreciate you guys. Um, we have one more commercial chuck of the day, and then we have our last um, commentary, and we'll be out. Hello, my name is Shalene Huey Booker, and I am the Executive Director for Youth Utilizing Power and Praise Organization. We seek to develop a cross-cultural network that enhances the whole being through the means of performing arts, fine arts, public speaking, and sports. Our students are between the ages of 6 to 25, and our mission is so important to us. But our vision really rains down in our hearts, and that is to create a safe environment where young people are able to grow, learn a new discipline, and know that they are known and loved. For more information about Yup Organization, feel free to check us out at www.yuporg.com. Again, that's www.yuporg.com. Or you can always find us on Facebook, or Instagram under Yup Org. Have a wonderful remainder of your day. Real quick, because I, I want to get to this last one, because <laughs> that little baby's a jig. So everybody knows that Nike is 
Nike bought Converse. Well, they knew how to do it the easy way. They made this version, which is kind of like a Yeezy version of a Converse Chuck. Yeah, you see that? Kind of spaced out everything. Real nice Chuck. Now, I say, when I say the most comfortable shoe in the world, this right here. This thing is comfortable. Like comfy, comfy. You like this, Leah? You like this? Tell the truth, same the devil. Yeah, that's actually pretty dope. Yeah, this is this is a nice shoe. It is, I agree. And it looks um it doesn't look all bulky like mm -hmm. most it, it's, it's not. It's not. Look, you That's the good thing about it. <laughs> Got that Yeezy kind of look to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would actually rock that one. Like, you know, normally in Converse, I only wear them with certain things, but that one is cute. They take that to the gym and be at the gym cute. That's when you put your camera on at the gym. The legging, the legging word that creases down the middle of the booty crack and separate the booty cheeks. Make uh, the booty no, I, didn't, I didn't even go there. Nope, nope, nope. The leggings with the pockets on the side that look uh, like cargo pants. Uh, <laughs> I saw I saw a woman with them leggings. But I looked like it's just sewn down the middle of the booty cheek, and this the booty was. I was just like, he was in there ready to have a heart attack. I don't know why we go to the gym in um, lingerie these days. I don't get it, but hey, whatever works. Um, so before we do this next topic, I want to do something really quickly, guys. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. So first things first, Praise Fest is going on April 20th. I will be one of the opening acts for Kiera Shear, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Charles Jenkins right here in Fresno. And from what I hear, Fresno got the lineup. The other lineups is really not all that great, but ours is dope. So yeah, praise the other fest, lineups are whack. Mm -hmm. The other lineups are very whack. So y'all get y'all tickets. Come on down to Fresno. Join us. Um, my spot is only about 10, you know, minutes or so, but we about to we about to make that 10 minutes feel like you have gone on an acid trip. <laughs> we about to act real crazy. Uh, the fellas is gonna be down, it's gonna be like four pieces of the biscuit. And we about to act real crazy. Um, so I just want you guys to be aware. April 20th, get your tickets now because this is going to sell fast. Um, Dante Taz is going to be in a drum clinic February 8th. So you guys make sure to go and support this. He'll be at the San Jose break room. Um, you can see more information on his page. Make sure you go and support that as well. Um, I've been to his drum clinics. They are absolutely informational. And everybody that is on this lineup is really, really amazing Hitters. individuals. So you would want to, if you're in the Bay, go to a few of these and take your kids if they're into music. You want to expose them to something great. This is the one that you want to do. Um, and then, of course, we have the um, city of Fresno is making a proclamation um, that February 21st will be Gospel Music Day. And I'm so, so honored that um, I will be able to be a part of that um, day. I'm really honored that I was even given the call when they were putting it together. So as you guys know, again, you can look me up on leahmariemusic.org uh, to follow my gigs. I don't post a lot on social media. You need to follow the website. Dante Taz, can you please say your website? DMR, oh, excuse me, DanteTaz.com. DanteTaz.com. So follow us online and make sure that you are um, keeping in touch with what we're doing. Um, we are definitely making moves in the industry. And uh, we're those people that are silent but deadly. You don't want to come across Sniper. us and Sniper. not make the connection. <laughs> Snipers, yeah. all day. So, Snipers all day. Um, this video, this pastor was uh, speaking on uh, women, but this, I actually want to talk about this in general. So just 
I'm asking you to listen to the video in its total and its context, not just as a quote unquote woman or man. So um, here we go. Oh, what? How am I supposed to hear it as not a what? When a woman has the power to walk away from a man that she loves, but he's not loving her back the right way, she allows the space that is necessary for her heart to heal. More importantly, when a woman can walk away from a man, when you can say to a man, okay, I'm done, I'm out of here, you then give that man the space he needs to gain clarity. Because sometimes access breeds blindness. We're blind to what we have access to. I would liken it to being in New York City at the Empire State Building. If you're right there at the front door, you can't see it. <laughs> because you, you have direct access, but the further away you are from it, the more it comes into view. Ooh, that's good stuff. That is good stuff. Corn ball. That's good stuff right there. I figured you would say that, <laughs> but that's Corn good ball. stuff because I have really been dealing with, um, walking away from situations situations, and choosing better for your life. Um, and it's not always going to be um, something that when you walk away, you just like, aha, yeah, um, Negro, I'm out and, and God gonna whoop you and this and that. Sometimes when you walk away from certain situations, you actually really want that situation to work and to cultivate something. And walking away is probably the hardest thing that you have to do. Sometimes when you're angry and you want to lash out and you want to do things that could potentially ruin your brand, walking away can be the hardest thing that you have to do. But it is so disengaging is such a therapeutic moment in your life. If you are able and mature enough to disengage, what is coming to you next will blow your mind. You also allow the other person to um, see the bigger picture. It gives both of you an opportunity to get out of the inside of the picture and both of you or however many persons we're talking about, you are able to look at the picture in whole in its totality. And in these situations, you have to learn how to be mature enough to give yourself the room for growth. It, it's no other way. If you don't have the ability to do that and, and not be, um, be vindictive when you do it, then you got some, you got to go back to the drawing board, got to get back in therapy, got to pray some more, and you got to really work that thing out in your heart. I'm really like the older I get, I'm learning when I walk away from something, I don't walk away from the person, I walk away from the habits, those bad habits that you create, those trauma bonds that you create, those um, situations that you create that could be detrimental to your livelihood or to your life or to your brand or wherever you're trying to go. Go ahead, Dante. Cornball, because my thing is, this is why I say cornball, because you told me to look at it universally instead of just trying to look at it as a man or a woman. My whole thing is this. If you're old, so you want me to walk away from what I'm old? No. Pay me mine. Give me mine. Then I can walk away. Because at the end of the day, when you have something of mine, i.e. money, uh, a valued heirloom, whatever the case may be, that's going to be on my head more than anything. And that's going to bring a true anger and a true mm, negativity with your name. So if you want to go on and do what you got to do, you make sure you leave clean. Because if you don't leave clean, you leaving just as dirty. Matter of fact, you making the situation even more dirty. 
I mean, everybody always talk. It, it's funny how all these people I've been looking at lately on on social media want to talk about is what a man or what a woman need to do to walk away. Yeah, of course, when you walk away from something, you want to take that, that space to get away and clear your mind. Everybody should do that. That's common sense. You shouldn't just break up with somebody and then two two days uh, next day or two days later, a week later, a month later, banging it out with somebody else. That's obvious. You need to clear your head from that situation. But you got to make sure they left or you left cleanly. Nothing old, nothing, no residue, no nothing. So it's an easier and cleaner break. And if you don't have that, then you're going to have some problems. Okay, so you just moved the goalposts because that's not what the, the post is talking about. But even in that situation, um, you definitely want to leave situations as clean as you possibly can. That shows um, that you respect what you were involved in, but it also shows that what you were involved in, some, some situations, that where you have to leave clean doesn't necessarily mean that you have to um, give whoever what they feel like they are owed. Sometimes you just need to have a conversation. If there's money to be had or if you have business or you have contracts, you fulfill your contracts, you do what you're supposed to do, and then you be done. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being able to step out of a situation so that you can see the bigger picture. Because a lot of times situations are detrimental to you. They are detrimental to your, your uh, mental capacity. They're det detrimental to your spiritual health. They're detrimental to your, um, your business health. And just merely being associated with said person or said company or said this or said that can literally begin to break you down. It doesn't mean that the other person or the other company or whatever is a bad thing. It just means that you are unequally yoked. Period. That's it. And the only way that you're going to be able to see that is to step out of it. The longer you stay in and you keep toxicity rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling, you will never get down to the business. You'll never get down to the business. You will never get down to moving yourself into a new realm of life. You'll never get to growth because you'll always stay in the vicious cycle of toxicity. And there are times in life where you have to make the decision to grow the heck up. You just got to grow up. Everybody's not out to kill you. Everybody doesn't want to hurt you. There are good people in the world. Everybody is not a narcissist. Everybody don't want to take you for all your money or take you for your goods or your cookies or whatever you want to call it. Everybody's not bad. You just choosing to rum rumble in the mud with a pig. Get out the slot pen and go home. Get your robe and your ring. <laughs> it's simple. See, but see, here's, the th here's the thing to that. If they are grabbing you by the hand and walking you to the mud pit and you don't want to be in there. Why are you even looking at it? Why haven't you stopped in your tracks and said, hold up, this ain't for me. With that being said, I'm good. And as pilot did, wash your hands of the situation and turn around and kick rocks. Well, you, you didn't listen to the video, which is why I said you had moved the goalposts. See, he said something very telling in that video. Um, people are not always as open, but you have to be. There's no, there's no hypocrisy in this. This is literally black and white. At some point in life, you are going to have to deal with where you are, and you're going to have to make a decision to either stay in it and be consistent, and try and grow what you have, or you're going to have to walk away. And not always when you walk away, is it going to be a negative walk away? It's not going to be one of those ones where um, you're looking at the person and you're 100 completely disgusted. You can really be in love with the person or in love with a thing or in love with 
um, something that is giving you quote unquote satisfaction. But just because it's giving you satisfaction does not mean it is for you. Disengage. Disengage. You got to disengage. Sometimes, you know, you could totally want a thing to work. But just because you want it to work does not mean you're walking in divine purpose. You could be in God's um, permissive will. You know, I, I, but I don't want to live in permissive will. I want to live in his divine will. I want to be with what's designed by me or designed for me, excuse me, not by me. But I want to do what is designed for me. I want to work in what is designed for me. I want to walk in what is designed for me. I want to live in what is designed for me. I want to walk in my capacity. And sometimes we are not living and housing our and cultivating who we are within our capacity. We steady trying to shift, shift, and stretch, and stretch, and stretch, and it's not your capacity. It's not for you. Disengage. It, that's powerful. But, I mean, you don't have to agree. Dante said that it is. Um, it's. Um, <laughs> he said it's malarkey. He doesn't believe in it. But I do, strongly. I mean, I, I, mean, I, res I, I respect. <laughs> listen. Listen to me clearly. I respect everything that you said, and I, I agree with what you said. But at the same time, if that person is sitting around acting a fool and you're letting them act a fool and you've been in there all this time and that fool person's acting a fool and then all of a sudden you get an inter intervention to go, oh my God, intervention, oh my God, I got to get out the situation. You've been the fool all that time tag teaming with this fool being a fool. To me, that that's... that. <laughs> That's just like, that's just like they friend is just around just being a friend, but their friend is step overstepping boundaries. If you let, if they let their friend overstep boundaries with you and you looking at, wait a minute, and you just going on, go along with the foolery of, well, that's just a friend and it, everything's going to be cool. Well, I overlooked that situation, man, miss me on that. You gotta you gotta see it too. You everybody ain't in love and um them uh those love goggles where they can't see but you. No, you gotta have reality around you all the time. So if you gonna act stupid, I'm not gonna walk down stupid lane with you. You got it. You straight? Cause now you show me I can't trust you. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I kind of I understand what you're saying on that. That's all I'm saying. That's why. I, that's why I was like, that's this. That's that dude who want to talk like that to make women. Yeah, he's a moron. No, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but it's that's not just to to men to women. It's to men and women. Yes, it is. And yes, while it is. Yes, everybody it is. doesn't walk around with your sense of self. Some people actually give of themselves in a relationship. And they do it blindly. They take people at their word. They give um, certain qualities of themselves to people who don't deserve it or have not earned it. Um, some people work for things that are not necessarily yielding the proper benefits. Because he didn't say that the other person didn't love you. He said he didn't love you the way that you needed to be loved. I agree. And that's the key to that. It's again, it's not to say that the other person or the situation is always a bad one. It's just not, it's by design, it's not for you. Or you're not in the moment because sometimes you can rush something that God didn't want you to rush. You trying to rush to the altar and man of God ain't through cooking. He's still right. alive. <laughs> or, 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 yeah, or, woman, woman, woman of God still got friends around that need to be kicked out. Of, should have been kicked out a long time ago. All that residue. I <laughs> hey, hey. you preacher now. Now, now, wait, hold on. Let me get my water. Now, now, <laughs> now, now I'm gonna give you offer. Now, now I'm, I'm gonna give you, here. I'm gonna give so, you offer. Here, I'm gonna give you offer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. And that's I'm actually, I'm that's actually that's holding. Good. I'm holding hundred dollar lines, not five dollars. You have to step to the side. Oh, it, it was a, it was a couple hundred dollar bills in here too. Okay, well you can come over here. No, on it was all it just wrapped backwards. So that's you, you, can, know. you can come on the stage. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to get into it. See, but I nonetheless, 
<laughs> Nonetheless, what I'm saying is it's not always that, you know, the situation is that the person is bad or whatever the case may be. It's just, it ain't for you. It just is what it is. It's not for you. So stop trying to press stuff and step back and see the picture in totality. Now, once you see it in totality, if you guys come to a meeting of the minds and you say, you know what, this is what it's supposed to be, but we need to take our time and we need to do A, B, C, and D, and you lay out a solid plan, that's different. Now, but you can't see that if you always end the toxicity. And sometimes you got to disengage. You have to walk away. If you don't, you'll never be able to self-assess. This light is really in my eyes, and I really can't see nothing in the comments. Ain't no comments. They they quiet. They listening today. I can't see. No, I can't even see. No, I can't see the comments at all. Like it's all. Uh -oh. I'm like, I can't see nothing. But yeah, goodbye can be a gift because when you say goodbye, goodbye doesn't mean that it's the last goodbye. It just means that you're saying goodbye in the moment. And those hey, moments are important. Hey, sometimes goodbye is the best thing in the world. <laughs> Especially when you see some foolery. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye is easy when you show me some foolery. I'll be like, and two of them. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, if <laughs> and Two of them. You didn't. If you can't. Going you know, on, we got to wash our hands. Two of them. <laughs> and would, we. Everybody deals with a little bit of foolery. That's you're going to get that. Yes. In life. Yes. You're going to get a little foolery, and and you're supposed to have a little foolery in a in a relationship, male and female. You got to have You got to have some a little bit of foolery to me, because that keeps the relation relationships interesting. Not no stupid foolery, but some foolery. Like how Kevin Hart said one time when he did his comedy thing, he said um, that, uh, you know, his woman was like, what you doing out here? And there were some women in bathing suits oh, all man. around him. There were some women with some bathing suits all around him. And he's like, I, I was just standing here. I, I don't know. Some, I'm just chilling. What, you ready? <laughs> and she's like, you around all these women? That's just, a, that's just that foolery. I wasn't even thinking about the situation. You know what I mean? So... Everybody gotta have some foolery. Just a touch. Just a touch. Where are you? Why are you muted again? Oh, are she on mute? Okay, I'm gonna start talking about people. So um Thursday, Wednesday, tomorrow, business to business with Jerrell Austin. You don't want to miss that because that's gonna be a dope situation. I promise y'all. That's gonna be a very dope. I can't even see the comments. Are they saying anything? Can't see that. That's okay. gonna be no. Right, they're not seeing nothing. I did um have something for that, but we'll let you have the last word. No problem. No, go ahead. No, I want I want you to do it. Go ahead. No, it, it's good. Uh, let me get the clips up. Okay, you were on Jarrell. Here you go. Yeah, you ready? Tomorrow, five p.m. 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Jarrell Austin with Business to Business, where she has special guests to come on her show on the regular. And they do one-on-one -on -one interviews and they talk about everything. They talk about getting your business together, how to get grants, how to get the loans, how to keep your business flourishing, how to AI, how to MI, how to BI, how to build your website, everything like that under the sun. So your business don't go from a opening, grand opening on Tuesday, and next Tuesday, a grand closing. Watch Jarrell Austin with Business to Business. On Wednesday night, we have, on Wednesday night, thank you, we have my son. We have my son, and this dude's show is just chaotic. This, this is my guy, though, and this is a dope show. I mean, when I say it's just all over the place and he gets to talk about it and he makes it real with you and he can also give you a little scripture in there as well my son at wednesdays at 8 p.m pacific time available on all those that you see here and of course on the bridge network on thursday oh jesus at 6 30 p.m this man right here jared lott who's also in the comments as as also as jarell rail jared lott brings the word of wisdom and also with the word of wisdom he also has a segment called ask a preacher so he has a, if you have a question you have a concern or anything all you got to do is inbox or leave your comment and leave your question in the comment section yeah. 
and he will answer it with the word of God. Now, when I say this man, I think he'd been on a revival kick and I think he's not really calling it revival. I think he's calling it just some good teaching, but he'd been on a revival kick lately. And when I say this man has been blessing the people of God, if you really want to hear a word, you really need that word. You need that midweek pick me up. This is where you want to be with words of wisdom at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time with Jared Lott. Okay, she muted. So with that being said, we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. This has been a dope show. We haven't been, we have, we have been away for a while because everybody's been moving. Our parts have been moving like crazy. Trying to, we got to get truth is out. We have a drum clinic tour coming up for me and all kind of stuff. But we promise, we promise we will settle that right now. You're going to get a full season of the Outlet Talks. We promise y'all that, okay? We promise y'all that. Leah Marie, we're going to support her and everything, all her endeavors and things that she's going to be doing. Hopefully, you guys will support everybody a part of the Bridge Network. You got my son. You got Jarrell. You got myself. You have Jared Lott. You have Leah Marie. Yo, man, be about, be about it. Be a part of it. You know what I mean? So let me set this thing up so we can get this thing out of here. And where is it? I'm going to go down here. Um, I'm going to try my best to talk about people either because, you know, I do that a lot. So, but with that, be oh, she's back. I, I told you, go ahead. Close it up. Okay. So closing it out, just want to let y'all know we love y'all. We appreciate y'all. We will see you guys next week. We will see you next week. Uh Man, this is 2024, y'all. This is a new year. It's going to be big. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be lovely. We love y'all. We out. We done. We the ones. This the outlet. Let's go.